So, Julius Malema once again speak about the unity of Africa continent. The president of EFF, Julius Malema, called for the unity of Africans because he believes that Africa is nothing without it being united. So, Julius Malema had to call for Africans to be united and call for a borderless Africa. Of course, he was talking according to the question which was put to him by the journalist who had to make a joke saying that once the EFF they are in power, which means South Africa will become a country for everyone, including Zimbabweans. So Julius Malema could not let go of this kind of jokes in the mind of South Africans and Africans who are all over Africa continent. So he had to come and respond back. Have listened to what Julius Malema said, then I'll be back with more analysis. We're not saying no foreigner must come and trade in South Africa because Zimbabweans are no foreigners in South Africa. They're Africans. So that's why you, you are wrong in your joke to say we are all going to be South Africans. Uh -uh. We are all going to go back to being Africans because that's the problem with you South Africans. You think you are a Europe of Africa, <laughs> that you are not part of the continent. We need to go back to our continent and identify with it, and it must be borderless. And borderless does not mean criminality. Europeans have a borderless continent called Europe. They trade with ease. You can have a breakfast. They travel with ease. They, they go to a football match the same man. night they take home. You, yeah. you, you, you have breakfast in Milan in Italy, and then sleep uh, in London yeah. with no hassle. So... And then when it comes to us, because the unity of Africans threatens them, they say no. Well, well, don't don't get me wrong. You know, personally, I mean, yes, I'd be very. Yes, I mean, yes. if you gave all Ethiopian women South African citizens, ah. I'd be the happiest <laughs> person. Right? I, I think they're harmless people generally. When I think about no, no, them. no. I think uh, Ethiopia we have gone too far. There's a club now which was pre playing in oh, in Afcon. Oh, Cabo Verde. Yeah, oh, Cabo Verde. Hey, hey. I, I hate all our hey, there was a huge Nava problem because we had to block buses of South African men leaving <laughs> to visit those men. <laughs> that was Julius Malema, the president of EFF, the economy freedom fighters. So, as you can see in this short footage that we played for you, Julius Malema was trying to raise up this point once again because we all know that this is one of his fights since he became a politician. He's a man who always called for the unity of Africans and he has some reasons that really motivate him to always talk about the unity of Africans. At first, when he started this journey of calling the Africans to be united, many people, they never really believe in what he was saying because they thought that it is something that which is impossible to happen, is something that will never going to happen. But in our days today, this message seems to be welcomed by many Africans around the world, in diasporas and in Africa continents, each and every African youth that are considering this message and they're trying to spread it all over Africa continent so that this dream can become true some days. But guys, every time you listen to Julius Malema, if you have to talk in behalf of Africa, he keep on insisting, saying that we don't have to continue to believe in something which was imposed by some people who came in our land and tried to put borders among ourselves and yet we keep on uploading that kind of behaviors, thinking that is a good thing for us. Julius Malema, he keep on saying this because he have realized that the former colonials who came in Africa continent and put all these borders among Africans, they did it with a purpose. They did it with one mission. They wanted to divide Africans. They want to see Africans being separate in everything they are doing so that they'll have an easy access to control Africans. If you always watch us, you'll agree with me every time when I'm always telling you that the oppressors, the former colonials, they like it when Africans are separate because the separation of Africans, it is an easy way for them to succeed with their mission. It is an easy way for them to continue looting Africa resource. And once the Africans are more separate, it is easy for them to continue doing all these bad things that they've been doing over and over. And to make even things easy for them, because Africa is not united, they're having easy access to choose our president 
a president that can be at their service, a president who can be a puppet president to them, and they are doing that. That is the reason why you see a lot of African leaders, they are becoming detectors in a very easy way without respecting even their own constitutions because they know that they are well backed by these Western powers. This Americans, uh, Europeans, France, British, they came in Africa not only to kind of like uh, pretending like they're not in Africa affairs, but they're actually deep in Africa affairs because they are controlling who have to come in power. They are controlling all these leaders. They are manipulating them. And proof to that, see for example, this our brothers from Sahel regions, I'm referring to Burkina Faso leader, Mali leader and Niger leaders. These leaders, since they put their power together, then they try to turn back against the Western power. You could see how uncomfortable countries such as France, British and America, they are so angry against this country and they are even trying by all means to put the kind of sanctions against these countries so that these military leaders, they can put their hands down or their gun down and give power to civilians because these oppressors, these former colonials, they believe that once the power it is in the end of a, a civilian, it is more easy to manipulate this kind of people. So they like to have something to say about Africans. And each and every Pan-African or a, a true African leader who tried to challenge them, who tried maybe to do something like to disobey them, they end up eliminating them or they end up putting serious sanctions against this kind of uh, president. And here I can give you many examples. We have presidents such as uh, like, uh, the late former, former Robert Mugabe, Mohamed Gaddafi, who was also killed just because he refused to obey uh, to their commands. And Robert Mugabe, he, who have to suffer serious sanctions, all just because he was also rejecting to listen to what they have to say. He was having that courage to tell them the truth right to their faces. So, that's, it is the kind of punishment they have to give to all these so-called African presidents who don't want to listen to them. But for the rest of these other African presidents who are at their service, they do everything these people they are asking. They obey them. They listen to them. They become puppets to the Western power. Well, I'm not the one who only have to say this. Even Busisiwa Mkobani, the former public protector of South Africa, recently spoke about the same thing. Uh, right now, like as it's the failure of the African Union because I mean they are failing to do that. But even the countries in Africa should be. Uh, making sure that they put Africa and Africa's agenda as a priority. And, I mean, they we had the African Union Agenda 2063 when uh, Dr. Nkosa Zanat Zuma was still there. And one of their key focus or one of their aspirations was that we need to have an Africa which is gun-free, no war, no killings. And that uh, they were supposed to achieve by 2020, but they failed. Mm. That is this still happening. But I think the issue of uh, Congo and other um, African countries which are rich in mineral yeah, resources, I think we know that uh, the West is um, creating this instability so that they can continuously loot uh, mm -hmm. their mineral resources. So it's basically that. And you'd find that... Um, we have a, a, a situation in Africa where we are still not yet um, putting Africa first and making sure that we make our resources to work for us. And um, by that, we will be able to even sustain ourselves, yeah, not even yeah. depend on mm. any other country. But unfortunately, then we have a lot of uh, or a lot of leaders in Africa who are unfortunately puppets to the West and who are controlled and who are placed by the West um, to, 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 to lead those countries. Would you say our president is one of them? <laughs> hey, Mr. McGee. <laughs> <laughs> Just because our leaders, our African leaders, they are at the service of the Western power, that make things become even more harder for us. Why? Because they can't do much. 
dude, you can't do much if you are at the service of someone. You can't do your willing if you are at the service or if you have to report to someone somewhere, someone seated in the United States of America or France. You can't do all these things because your hands are tight and you can't really offer or give a proper service to the people who had voted you. For the fact that these people, they have our leaders into their hands. That makes things more easy for them because they don't want our leaders to be responding to what the people of their countries are asking them. For an example, this message that Julius Malema or this campaign that we are seeing some of our true Pan-Africans such as a Prof. Uh, uh, Lumumba from Kenya, uh, Julius Malema from South Africa, and so many Pan-Africans who are all of Africa continent, including uh, President uh, Traore from Burkina Faso, who are busy preaching for the unity of Africa. This message, you're not going to tell me that our leaders, your president, don't or have not heard about this kind of message. They do hear hear about this message but they don't want to put it in actions whenever they go they sit in Addis Ababa or, or Kenya Nairobi they don't want to apply these things because most of these African leaders that are at the service of the Western they are it is the Western who are busy controlling them manipulating them telling them what to do and what not to do so if our leaders still at the service of the West power Tell me how and how again is it going to be possible for African to be united? Now, that is just a question I'm giving to you because you will have to understand on what level was stuck. Because our leaders, they're supposed to be presenting what are our thoughts, what we thought, what we think, what we say, what we want to happen. That is what they're supposed to be applying. But just because they are under control, they have to report to someone who's above them. It becomes a serious challenge for them to do exactly what the people of Africa want for them to do. Because they know they don't owe us something. I mean, they don't owe us anything. Instead, they owe it all to the people who had put them in power to the people who had campaigned for them and make them look like they are good people who want to work for the best of their people. Guys, that already, it is a problem. But here's another thing. You know, Africa, we can't be united if we're still having conflict all over Africa continent. Conflict, where there is conflict. And here I'm talking about ethnic conflicts, we're talking about xenophobia, attacks. We're talking about a lot of kind of things like conflict among Africans. It is something that will destroy Africa forever. It is something that will leave Africa at poverty. It is something that will make Africa to not achieve something that they're supposed to be achieving long time ago. Sorry. The, something that they're supposed to be achieving long time ago. Do you know why? Because... This conflict, it is not in the nature of us as Africans. This conflict is something which is being imposed on Africans. How can Africa be united when we still have conflict everywhere? You go in Nigeria, you find Boko Haram over there killing their own brothers. I'm talking about their fellow Africans. You go in South Sudan, you find they're having serious problem between two ethnics. Darfur and this other culture, which I forgot the name. They are having civil war among themselves. You go in DRC, we are having some terrorist rebellions who are over there and, and they are busy killing people, including their own neighboring so-called country of Rwanda, which is busy arming all these rebels in order for them to attack the government of Congo. You go in Sahel region, we can't even talk, there is even more worse. Because we are talking about people fighting for lands and petrol and it's different mineral resource. All this conflict, it is not something that Africans choose to have among themselves. But it is the former colonial who pretend, as I always tell you, the former colonial, they pretend to leave Africa 
of course they live it physically when our forefathers our four leaders i mean former leaders who were busy fighting we're talking about nelson mandela patrice meru mumba uh, mohammed kuruma and thomas sankara uh, mohammed Gaddafi, robert mugabe all these leaders when they were fighting for our freedom they succeed indeed to chase the western power or the former colonial out of africa continent but they did not manage to succeed to chase this former colonial through our thinking through our mind through our minerals through our minings through, through everything they stuck so the white man choose to leave africa physically but not morally not monthly because they knew very well that we're not gonna succeed to survive without africa we're not gonna survive without africa mineral we're not gonna survive without africa diamond petrol uh, gold uh, platinum whatsoever it is because they know very well that everything that they need it is what africa have as I always tell you again that Africa is that one kidney that the world need to survive. You know when you are having two kidney and these two kidney one got affected they had to remove it. Now you are surviving with only one kidney. So you will make sure that you take good care of this so-called one kidney that left so that you can survive as long enough on this earth. But if you can't treat this kidney properly, obviously you are playing with your life. And that is something that these Western countries, these former colonials, they are forgetting so far that Africa continent, it is that one only kidney that remains for them to survive. And for the fact that they keep on cheating on Africans, they keep on looting Africans, they keep on destroying Africa, hoping that someday Africa is not going to wake up. That's a big mistake they're making. Because the kind of message people such as Julius Malema, they are preaching out today in behalf of Africans, calling for the unity of Africa. Guys, it is not, it's not a joke. This is something that will make Africa to survive. When you hear, for example, Julius Malema saying that we would love to have one currency, for Africans, for the whole entire Africa. You know what does that mean? Proof of example to that, look at it, I mean Europe, they're having one currency. The United States of America come and try and play with them. They don't even, they're having that mutual respect. Why? Because of their own currency. When Julius Malema is also talking about Africa having, uh, Africa becoming a borderless continent. You know what does that mean? Because some people, just because we lack this kind of mentality or a good way of thinking, if I have to put it in that way, we believe that when people such as Julius Malema are calling for the unity of Africa, that means that no, okay, we are losing everything and then everyone can just come in my country and do whatsoever pleases them. No, the man actually needs ideology. It does not mean it in that way. The man is only calling for a borderless country a borderless africa that simply means to say you can go and buy some tomatoes from tanzania and bring it to south africa once you sell you get your money obviously there won't be a need for you to live in south africa yes you go back to your country because you think that you still gonna go and get more merchandise for you to come and sell it to south africa if you get some um uh, let's say maybe some uh, cafe from Burkina Faso, you can travel all the way to Kenya and sell it and you don't need to be stressing too much because it's all about Africa becoming borderless when it comes to trades. Because these things of having passport and visa, it is what is killing Africa right now. These are the things that are making Africans thinking that they are much better than others. Julius Malema even said it, reminding South Africans that we kind of like believe that we are the United States of Africa, we are the United States of America based in Africa because we kind of like kind of isolating ourselves from our fellow Africans and thinking that no, we are better without them. Forgetting that if today this sorest of Africa continent block they are rolled out and saying that okay since you guys are in the south of africa remain over there no one should not cross to zimbabwe mozambique or botswana or so on and on 
we are nothing so the guy is trying kind of like trying to remind africans the importance of having a borderless continent because it will help us and a white man have understand that that is the reason why they are trying everything by all means to make sure that africans they should not be united they're trying every means by uh, by by, uh, by they're trying everything by all means to make sure that africans they should not be at peace that's the reason why you're seeing there's there's a conflict everywhere the fact that there's a, too much conflict everywhere africa we're not gonna go anywhere beside that Another thing also that is holding Africans from developing it is these things of believing too much in church, believing too much in prayers. How do you think that, how can you believe that with your prayer only is something that can make Africa to be united? Because those people who are pretending to pray so much and speak in tongues, yet they are not able to share a, a, a small banana with their fellow believers or fellow Christians. So these are the things that can destroy Africans in everything. I want you guys to pay attention to this video I'm about to play with you. So this is uh, Prof uh, Lumumba from Kenya, who was also talking in behalf of Africa, talking about on how some of the things that are making Africans to not be united, things are holding Africa from not being united. And guys, you'll be surprised, it's not big things, small things have watch conflict in northern mali the country is divided de facto into two in the democratic republic of congo 120 armed groups yet it is the busiest airspace in the continent of africa minerals are being taken away to europe and america central african republic the same libya the same Several months ago, I wrote to the chair of the African Union and to all African heads of state and said, convene a meeting with only one agenda item. What can we do to save Africa from this slide? Only four replied. That is the state of the continent of Africa. We must deal with the basic things. We must solve conflict. We must change our governance because if we don't deal with the question of governance, we are going nowhere. Africa has become a continent where after every election there is conflict because the pursuit of power is the cutthroat competition where throats are actually cut. And when the SMO was here and he consulted the oracles, he discovered that we have a problem in that direction and that the sooner we resolve that the safer we will be africa can rise and africa will rise but it's not going to rise by prayer and fasting we must pray and fast but it will not happen because the last time i checked even those of you you are believers when Abraham was taken from Ur of the Chaldeans and given Canaan, it was not on a silver platter. He had to fight the Canaanites. He had to fight the Philistines. That is the nature of divine instruction. Go ye and subdue the world by the sweat of thy brow. The kitchen where they make manna was closed. Manna will no longer come. Because you must now make your manna. And it is our duty, therefore, as Africans to begin to rethink the younger generation. You know, there is a saying in Chichewa in Malawi that more precious than our children are our children's children. So when we are doing these things, we must remind ourselves that we are doing for this generation and generations yet to be born. Again here, you can see and tell that it is conflict Conflict it is what is destroying Africa. Mm -hmm. Conflict, it is something that the oppressors, they had think of and they come up to a conclusion saying that if only we can manage to put conflict within Africans, whereby there is no peace reigning among the Africans, then it will be more easy. Proof to that, Wherever there is a conflict, you will always hear such organization as a, uh, 
Europe, Union, America, NATO, France, British, Germany, Belgium. These are the countries who always jump in the front line saying that we are here to offer you a solution. We are here to make you guys sit on the table and dialogue. They are doing all that not for you guys to come with a better conclusion. No, they are doing all that because they know very well that once Africans go to a dialogue, they never come up with a proper agreement which can put them be at peace. You find them that they'll agree on something today and tomorrow they'll be doing something else. That is the reason why you are seeing there's a lot of armies, uh, I mean, uh, rebellion groups all over Africa continent because you find that they'll be fighting a government as a rebellions. And the next things when they sit on the tab, I mean, on the table and they dialogue, they'll agree on certain things just for a short period and the next things you see some of them they go back in the bush and start fighting again if you ask them why fighting they'll say like no we had an agreement and this agreement was not approved and most of this agreement you find out that it is not in the benefit of the africans it is in the benefit of the western power because again they are the people who have been behind all this they are the mastermind behind all this division that we get to see all over africa continent guys these are the things that we need to stand and put our power together not too much prayers guys too much prayers is weakening up the africans yes because when you sit and keep on believing on in your talking language or rabba rabba shiko rabba rabba kayoko you'll say all these things but at the end of the day there won't be any kind of good solution because guys the enemy who does not want to see africa progressing the enemy who does not want to see africa doing good who does not see the economy of africa raising up becoming also um, among number ones in the world well they know the secret to that they know how to destroy africans they want to put even more trouble and more division ab among africans so that them they'll be able to do whatsoever pleases them now you the person who's watching me you as an african wherever you find yourself around the world do you think that africans we can be united without conflict without having puppet presidents who are at the service of the western power without um, us having our own army, our own currency without having a borderless continent why is it I mean why are we finding it so hard to be united as Africa and make it a borderless continent when people who came here and put borders among Africans them they are seated over there in Europe and they are not having borders you heard Julius Malema saying it very well that some of them they are deciding to go to another neighboring country to go and have a, a, an appointment a date of coffee they go they sit on the table some of them they go there to watch soccer you go there knowing that okay your national football team you will be playing maybe against belgium you from france you travel you go to belgium you watch the game after the game you take your train and go back to your country that is something african were failing to do so far now how are we gonna make this africa become great how can we rescue this african continent so guys like it or not like julius malema or not i think the men makes sense on what he's saying on this part here and this is something that all of us as africans all over we find ourselves we should embrace and try to give it a push so that this message can reach even to more people out there we really do appreciate indeed your presence being here because it is very important that we have you and it is very important that we have to sit down here and discuss with you about this uh, point that uh, Julius Malema raised on his interview because we all want to see Africa to be united because the unit of Africa it is indeed a very important thing that we need to take more seriously for the future of our children and many generations to come so that they must not experiencing what we're experiencing today. We are talking about unemployment all over Africa continent. How can we fight unemployment if we still divide it? 
We are talking about uh, um, serious problems that Africans are, fight, are facing, such as a conflict all over Africa. How can we do that if we are not united? Of course, I'll be talking more about this uh, topic in our next videos. So if you don't want to miss any of it, make sure that you join us by subscribing to this channel right now so that uh, when we back again in life, you'll be able to know that we are here. But above all, do me a favor, I'm begging you, don't leave without you giving me your thumbs up. Look down here, you see that thumbs? Just click on it, it is free of charge. The reason why we're asking you to do this is because it is a way of you also appreciating what we're doing here and you want us to come up again with the best analysis so that we can keep on discussing about matters that concern Africa because we believe that we are Africans and we should be proud of that. So that would be all for today. Please be good, be kind, have respect for everyone in order for you to be respected. May God bless you all. Also again very soon. Ciao, ciao. Oh,